Hey there, welcome to this video. My name is Jan Zuiderduin, founder of LearnSolidworks.com. And today in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to model this tennis ball in SolidWorks. And next to that, I'm also going to show you how you can import decals, such as this logo from Adobe Illustrator into SolidWorks. And this way you can project the logo onto your 3D model. So you can download the working files for this lesson under this video. So make sure to download them. And then we're going to start modeling our tennis ball right away. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new part. So we're going to File, New. We're going to select the Part option right here and click OK. All right, we're going to make sure that our background is white. If, uh, if the background is not white, you can also change it right here to plain white. And now we're going to make our planes visible. So I'm going to select the front plane in the feature tree, hold down your shift key and select the right plane. Now release your shift key and click at the eye icon to make the planes visible. We're also going to make sure that our measurement is set to millimeters right here. So in the lower right corner, you can change the dimensions to millimeters. And now we're going to start modeling our tennis ball. And therefore we're going to create a new sketch on the front plane. So we're going to select the front plane and click at the 2D sketch icon right here. All right, now we're going to draw a circle. So click at the circle command right here. And we're going to start the circle at the origin right here, up till here. And now we're going to apply a dimension. So click at the smart dimension option right here. And we're going to make sure that the diameter of our tennis ball is 60 millimeters. So type in 60, click OK. All right, this looks good. Now we're going to make our tennis ball with revolve and therefore we need to put one side of our circle away. So therefore we're going to create a, a straight line. So click at the line command right here and we're going to draw a line from this point right here up to this point right here. Now right click select in order to close the line command and now we're going to trim this part of the circle away. And therefore we're going to use the trim entities feature. So click at the trim entities Make sure that power trim is selected. And now we're going to click and drag our mouse over this part of the circle. And now we have a half circle. Now click OK. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to revolve this shape in order to create a ball shape. So we're going to features, click at revolve boss base. We're going to select our axis of revolution and that will be our vertical edge right here. Make sure that the Direction angle is set to 360 degrees and click OK. All right, this is the base of our tennis ball. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to save our part and therefore we're going to click at the save icon right here. Now browse to the folder where you want to save your work and we're calling our file a tennis ball. Now click save. All right, so now we're going to draw the lines onto our surface of the tennis ball and therefore we're going to create a new sketch on the right plane. So select the right plane and click at the 2D sketch icon. Now we're going to click at the drop down menu next to the corner rectangle and we're going to select the center rectangle option right here. So select center rectangle and we're going to draw a center rectangle starting at the origin of our ball up till the edge of our tennis ball. Just like that. Now right click select. Now you can see that our a rectangle is blue, which means it's not fully defined yet. And that's because we didn't uh, make sure that those lines have an equal length. So therefore, I'm going to apply an equal dimension. So I'm going to select this line right here. Hold down your control key and select this line right here. Now release your control key. And now we're going to make sure that the lines are set to make equal. So this option right here. And this way, we are sure that our lines are both the same length and they are connected to the round surface right here. So now you can see that our line becomes black, which means it's fully defined. Now we're going to make sure that this is a center line. So I'm going to click and drag to select our rectangle. And I'm going to click at four construction twice in order to change our lines into construction lines. All right, this looks good. Now we're going to draw a new circle into our sketch. So I'm going to click at the circle command again we're going to draw another circle starting at the origin again. And this time the circle will go up till this point right here. Now right click select, and now we have created a new line. 
I want to trim one side of our line away. So we're going to use the Trim Entities option again. So click at Trim Entities, make sure that Power Trim is enabled. And now we're going to click and drag over this part of our line in order to remove it. So I'm going to remove those parts of the circle. Make sure that the center lines will not be deleted. This looks good. Now click OK. Now I want to offset this line right here and therefore I'm going to click at Offset Entities. I'm going to select this line. I'm going to reverse the direction and I'm going to make sure that the, the distance is set to five millimeters. And now click OK. This looks good. I also want to make sure that this line is the center line as well. So I'm going to select it and click at for construction. And now I'm going to draw two lines from here to here and from here to here. So click at the line command. We're going to make sure that the line will start right here up to this point right here. And I'm going to draw a second line from here up till here. All right, now our line is fully defined. It's fully black, so this looks good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to offset this line in both directions. And therefore, I'm going to click at the offset entities command. Make sure that the offset distance is set to 1.5 millimeters. Make sure it's set to bi-directional. And now I'm going to select this line right here in order to offset those lines. Now click OK. This looks good. I'm going to make sure that the, the center line will be a construction line. So I'm going to select those lines right here by holding down my control key. And I'm going to click it for construction. Now click OK. And now we have created a fully defined sketch. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to project this sketch onto the surface of our ball. And therefore I'm going to click at insert, curve, split line. Our sketch is already selected. So I'm going to click at this blue box right here. I'm going to select this surface because this is the surface where we want to project our sketch on. We're going to make sure that the sketch is projecting in both directions. So single direction should be disabled. So it's good like this. And now we're going to click OK. And if you now look to our ball, we have created a beautiful line onto the surface of our tennis ball. But of course, this is not just a surface. We want to make sure that this is an debossing into our model. And therefore, I'm going to copy this surface right here. So I'm going to copy the surface and then I'm going to use the Cut Thicken tool in order to create a cutted line into this surface. So click at Insert, Surface. We're going to select an offset option right here. Make sure that the offset distance is set to zero millimeters. And now I'm going to select this surface right here. And by making a surface offset with zero millimeters, you're basically copying the surface right here, which is good. So click OK. And now we have copied this surface. So you can see a solid body right here, and you can see a surface body in the surface body box right here. So make sure to select the surface offset right here, and now we're going to create a thickened cut. So select the surface offset, go to insert, cut, thicken. Now we're going to make sure that the thickness is set to thicken to both sides. And we're going to make sure to set the thickness to 0.5 millimeters. And this will cut away 0.5 millimeter from our surface. So now click OK. And now we have created a beautiful cutted surface. All right, this looks good, but this is also a very hard edge. So we're going to apply a fillet to those edges right here. And therefore, I'm going to click at the fillet command. Make sure that the radius is set to 5.5 millimeters. And now I'm going to select this surface right here. Now this looks pretty good. And now click OK. All right. Now I also want to apply a small fillet to those edges right here because those are also quite sharp. So therefore, we're going to make a new fillet. So click at the fillet command. Make sure that the radius is set to one millimeter. And we're going to select this edge right here and this second edge right here. All right, click OK. Perfect, this looks pretty good. So now we're going to apply some appearances to our model. I first want to make my entire model white. So therefore I'm going to click at the part file right here, right click. We're going to click at the drop down menu next to appearances. We're going to select our part. 
And now we can apply a material if we want. So in this case, I think it will be nice to make the body entirely white. And we can apply a rubber material, for example. So if I go into the rubber material folder right here and select moth, I can select a matte rubber. And now I can change the color into white, for example, and click OK. All right, this looks pretty good. And now, of course, I also want to adjust the color of those two surfaces right here to make them more like a green yellowish color. So I'm going to select those two faces by holding down your control key. Now right click, you're going to click at the drop down menu right here. And now we're not going to select the part, also not the body, not the feature, but we're going to select those faces because we only want to change the color of those faces and not from the features or the bodies or the entire part. So click at face. And now we can apply a material that we like for our um, tennis ball. So in this case, uh, we can go for a plastic, for example, maybe more like a textured material. So click at textured. And now I'm going to apply uh, this material right here, for example. And of course, we can, uh, can adjust the color a little bit like this, like more like a yellow material and click OK. And now we have applied a beautiful material to our tennis ball. All right, this looks good. Now we're going to save our file. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a logo onto this surface. And I want to show you how you can import a decal such as a logo uh, from a design software such as Adobe Illustrator into SolidWorks. So let me show you how you can do that right now. So here you see the Learn SolidWorks logo I designed in Adobe Illustrator. Now let me show you how you can project this logo into SolidWorks. It's quite easy. We're going to File, click at Export, Export As. Now browse to the folder where you want to save your logo. And now we can save the logo as a .dxf file or a .dwg file. So I'm going to select the .dwg file and click at Export. Now click OK. And now I have made a DWG file of this logo. You can find this file in the folder of your working files, or you can also download them under this video in case you didn't do so yet. So make sure to download the logo. And now we're going to project the logo onto this surface right here. So therefore I'm going to select the front plane. I'm not going to click at the 2D sketch icon. I'm only going to select the front plane. Now go to insert. Now you can click at the DXF slash DWG option right here. Now we're going to browse to the folder where you save your DWG file. And we're going to set this box to DWG. And now I'm going to select the Learn SolidWorks logo and click at open. And now SolidWorks will import this logo onto a 2D sketch. So make sure it's set to import as a 2D sketch. Click next. This is the logo we were going to project. So we're going to click at finish. Now SolidWorks is asking us if we want to make an exploded block option, which is perfect. So click yes. Now, and now we have imported our logo onto a SolidWorks plane. Now you can see that the logo is not on the position we want to have it. So we're going to adjust the position and therefore uh, we need to, to edit this sketch a little bit. So if I'm going to click at the sketch in the feature tree and I'm going to click at right click, make edit sketch, I can now edit this sketch. So if I click at right click again, I'm going to click at edit sketch. I can, I can adjust this sketch and we're going to move it to the right position. So therefore I'm going to click and drag in order to select our sketch. Now I'm going to click at move entities. Now I'm going to select the sketch right here. So select the point of the logo and we're going to place it, manually place it on the right position where we want to display the Learn SolidWorks logo. I think this will be a nice place to place it. So I'm going to click in order to move my logo. And now we're going to click at OK. And now you will see that our logo is moved to another position. All right, this looks pretty good. Now, of course, I can use the split line option in order to project those lines onto our surface, but I 
I want to show you another way to do this as well, which is by using the wrap tool. And therefore, I'm going to close my 2D sketch right here. And now I'm going to insert features. We're going to click at the wrap tool, so this icon right here. Now we need to, need to select a sketch. And of course, we want to select our 2D logo sketch. And we can select it right here. Or we can also select it in the feature tree right here. So I'm going to select my logo sketch. And now we can choose for our wrap type. So we can make an embossing or a debossing. Or this third option is a stripe. In this case, we're going to make a deboss. So click at the deboss option right here. Now we can select a wrap method. So we can make it analytical or we can make a spline surface. In this case, I want a spline surface. So click at the spline surface. Make sure to select the sketch, which is already selected right here. Now we're going to select a face where we want to project the logo on. So we're going to select this face right here. And we're going to set a depth. So in this case, we want a very small depth. So I think 0 0.01 is enough. So set the depth to point, point 0.01. And now we click OK. All right, so now we have projected our logo onto our surface. Now I want to change the color of this logo. And therefore, I'm going to select this feature because I only want to change the color of this feature. Click at the drop down menu next to appearances. Click at the wrap option right here. And now I'm going to change the color to a dark gray, for example, or black. So select the color you like, and now click OK. All right, guys, so now we have projected our logo onto our tennis ball. This looks pretty good. So now I'm going to hide my planes. So click at View, Hide, Show, Hide All Types. We can also apply a perspective. So if you go to View, Display, we can enable the perspective right here. And if you click at the view settings right here, you can also apply uh, shadows in shade mode, for example. And now we have created a beautiful tennis ball. All right, guys, now we're going to save our work. And that's it for this lesson. All right, guys, so hopefully you like this video. Let me know your thoughts about this video as well. I always love to get feedback from you. And also make sure to check out learnsolidworks.com for many more SolidWorks product modeling tutorials. Thanks for watching, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll talk to you next time.